Okay, today we're starting word problems. This is really going to test your perseverance because you really need to take some time with these. Give yourself a chance to work through them. Don't give up too easily. Persevere. That's one of our new math words. We're going to persevere through problem solving. We're going to be setting up equations, like all the hard equations that we've been solving, but we're going to be given those equations in the form of the English language. So we're going to be translating our words from English into mathematical statements. This is 4-3 in your textbook, section 3 in chapter 4, and it's from pages 211 to 219, but many of these problems are not found in your book. You'll see that as we go on through the packet, we'll do the problems in the book later. So I'm on page 1 in your new packet. So to translate a word problem or real life situation to an algebraic equation, you must use one of the following four methods before writing the equation to solve it. So you have four ways that you can set it up. You can use a bar model, as you'll see the book will do many times, a table, sometimes word problems are good for tables, a diagram, or a table, or a let statement, excuse me, or a let statement. Um, the first the first example here has to do with a triangle. Uh, the length of the second side of a triangle, so we know a triangle has three sides, is three more than the length of the first. The length of the third side is twice the first. The perimeter of the triangle, perimeter, oh, that's the sum or the adding of all the sides, so I'm going to put a big plus sign there, is 51. Find the length of each side. So we have to find all three sides. I'm going to start with the diagram way. And you can see I drew a diagram here because I think that's the easiest way to start with this one, a triangle, three sides. They've given us information. The length of the second side of a triangle is three more than the first. So I'm just going to, the one I don't know anything about is the first one. I'm going to call it x. That's the favorite variable to use in word problems. The length of the second side is 3 more than the first. And it doesn't matter how you draw your triangle. The length of the second side is 3 more, 3 more than, 3 more, more than means plus, 3 more than the first, which I called x. So the second side is 3 plus x. So 3 plus x or x plus 3 doesn't matter. Oops, I already drew the x. The length of the third side is twice the first. Twice, so that means times 2, and I'm calling the first x, so twice x would be 2x. So my longest side is 2x. So that's the diagram that matches this word problem. Um, as a bar model, I would have um, the length of the first one would be x. The length of the second one is x plus 3. And the length of the third one is two times as long as these x's. So 1, 2x. So we have our x, our x plus 3, and our 2x. There's a bar model, and all together, these are going to have to add to 51. So that's a bar model way of setting up this word problem. A table way would be, okay, you've got three sides, so first side, second side, third side. Um, and, they, and I would call them all x to start with in a table, and I would say, okay, the second one is 3 more than it, so that's x plus 3. So this is what's unique, or this is how it's compared to the first side, which is just the x one. So that guy all the way across is just going to be x. My third side is twice it, so it's going to be 2 times that x, so 2x. So I would add up this last column here, so x plus x plus 3 plus 2x, I would add up this column and set that equal to 51. 
with the let statements, they kind of all look the same. The let statements would be, I would say, let x equal the first side. And why did I uh, decide that x was going to be the first side? And the key of how I solve word problems. The length of the second side of a triangle is three more than the length of the first. Whatever is usually at the end of the sentence, that's the thing you know least about. So that's the thing I'm going to call x. The length of the second side of a triangle is. The length of the second is. The length of the second. Second is. Second is something. They're telling me about the second side. So I kind of know a little bit about that. The length of the third side is. The third side is. So I know a little bit about the third side. And again, at the end of the sentence is the word first. So if I choose x to be the first, then I can represent the other sides in terms of the first. So let x equal the first side. The second side is 3 more than, so that's x plus 3. That equals the second side. And sometimes I just abbreviate, it, abbreviate this and I'll say first, second. And then the third side, it's twice, that means times 2, equal the third side. And I'll, as we go on, you'll see that I'll just write third, kind of abbreviate my last statement. So then the equation, the equation part of this word problem, the perimeter of the triangle is, there's my equal sign, the perimeter of the triangle is equal to 51. So the sum of the sides equals 51. This is my equation. The other sentence is my, the other two sentences rather, are my let statements or my variables. That's how I set up my variables. This third equation here, that's how I set up my, the third sentence, that's how I set up my equation. The sum of the sides of the triangle is 51. So the equation is x, and you can take it from any one of these three, um, or four, excuse me, four bar model, diagram, table, or let statements, and add those things up. So I have an x, I have an x plus three, second side, and a 2x, third side, has to equal 51. There's the equation. Okay, well, we've got to solve. What's the length of each of the sides? Well, from like terms, an x plus an x plus 2x's, that's 4x, plus 3 equals 51. So here we're going to be doing a lot of equation solving again. I always add or subtract first. I do PEMDAS in reverse. So I get 4x equals 48. Divide by 4, divide by 4, x equals 12. But I'm not done because I have to answer what are the other two sides. Just my x, my first side, is 12. So then you have to show this step. What's x plus 3? 12 plus 3. Oh, that's 15. So that's the second side. And 2x equals the side of 24, the third side. So my three sides of my triangle are 12, 15, and 24. I better make sure before I sable this, hopefully you remember sabling, sentence, answer, box, label. Yes, we're going to write a full sentence answer literacy here. 4, 5 is 9, and 2 is 11. Carry the 1. Oh, I get 51. Yes, that must be the right answer. That's my mini check idea. So now in a full sentence, Sentence, answer, box, label. Hopefully you remember this. I call it sable. Write a sentence. Make sure you're answering the question being asked. Put a box around it and watch your labels. So the perimeter of the triangle is 51. Find the length of each side. The sides of the triangle are 12. 15 and 24. Oh, did they give us a unit? No, we don't have that. So it doesn't say feet, yards, inches, or miles, so it's units. The lengths, the sides of the triangle are 12, 15, and 24 units. Um, that's my sentence. Gonna put a box around it. I've got a label, which is units, 
And that's the full word problem equation solving process. You've come full circle this year now. Now you know how to translate words, put it into math, and solve those harder like terms and distributive property. We're going to see all of that stuff in our word problems. With that in mind, let's go to page four, please. And I'm not going to do all of these because some of them we're going to do in class. So I'm going to skip down to number four. I'm going to do a few on each of the next couple pages. Um, number four says, the second of two numbers is five more than twice the first. Their sum is 80. So their sum is 80. That's my equation. That's my equation. So sometimes I write EQ there. Uh, find the numbers. The second of two numbers is five more than, so that means five plus, twice the first. Twice means multiply by two. And I'm going to call the first x. So I'm going to do two times that x. The second of two numbers is five more than twice the first. So I could bar model this, but I'm not going to. I'm going to write let statements. Let x equal the first. Five more than, so five more than would be five more than, five more than twice the first. The first I'm calling it x, so I'm going to put that x in this second let statement. That's the second number. First number, it's not a hashtag by the way. That's the number symbol, which they call hashtag. So we're hashtagging it here in math. So um, the second of two numbers is five more than twice the first. Their sum is 80. So I know what the two numbers are. And you're like, huh? How do you know what the two numbers are? Well, I'm representing the two numbers with letters of the alphabet. I've got to put those statements that I have here, my let statements, together in an equation by what this equation sentence says. Their sum is 80, equals 80. So their sum, first, plus the second, oh, that's 5 plus 2x. So first plus second is 80. So that's their sum, this is their sum part, is, that's the equal sign, 80, oh, 80. So I could literally write the equation, the words, right above this mathematical equation that I have here. This is the English sentence. This is the math equation that matches it. Their sum is 80. So I have like terms. 2x's and x, that's 3x plus 5 equals 80. Oh, let me remind you. I know there's not a lot of space on the paper here for each of the problems. If you're a large writer, you may want to write on your spiral notebook perhaps, and then you'll have lots of room to write this all down. Probably a good idea to do that, because we also have to um, do checks. Oops, and I forgot to put the plus sign in between. So 3x plus 5 equals 80. I'm going to subtract 5 from both sides, because I always add or subtract first, and I get 3x equals 75. I'm going to divide by 3, and I know that 25, or there are 3 quarters and 75 cents. So x is 25. I have to answer this second part of it. I have to know what the second number is. So 5 plus 2x, I'm going to write down that left statement that I have above there and put my x into it. 5 plus 2 times 25. Well, I have to do that multiplication first. 2 times 25 is 50, plus 5 is 55. Oh, you can hear they're lined up right here. I can check 5 plus 5 is 10. Oh, yep, yeah, they're 80. So there's my little mini check. I've got the two numbers, 25 and 55, sum to 80. So now, I checked it, now I can write my sable. Find the numbers. The numbers are 25 and 55. Put it in the box. Um, the, the label is numbers, so I've got all the parts there. I did a check, I have the right equation, I solved it. The numbers are 25 and 55. So let's turn to the next page. We're going to do number seven, please. Number seven. 
The sum of two numbers is 172. The sum, okay, that means add, so you have to know what that word is, is, that's the equal sign, 172. So this first sentence, that's my equation. The first is 8 less than, ooh, 8 less than. That means minus 8. That means that 8 comes after the minus sign. 8 less than, remember when it has two words to mean subtract less than, but that comes after. Whatever is after that less than comes first in the equation. Five times the second. Five times the second. The first is eight less than five times the second. I know something about the first. The second I don't know about. So I'm going to call that the x. And I literally write it on top of the words like this. The first is eight less than five times. So yes, that's five times x. 8 less than 5 times x. So I know that my first number, 8 less than 5 times x, 8 less than 5 times x, that's my, that's the first number. And let x, that's my second number. So those are my let statements. So when I sum these, so I've got to go back to what I'm calling the numbers. So 5x minus 8, that's the second number, or the first number, first number, plus the second number, sum means plus. So here's the first number. I don't have to have them in parentheses. They don't need to be. But just to show you, this is first plus second is equal sign 172. So again, I have like terms here. 5x's plus uh, 1x, that's 6x. Take away 8 equals 172. See how I told you, you're not going to have a lot of room here. Add 8, add 8. So you might want to do this in your spiral or just make sure you write a little bit smaller. And I'm going to have to bring this equation over here. And I get 6x equals 180. Opposite of multiplying is dividing, cancel, and I get x equals 30. That second last statement here, so 5x minus 8 would be 5 times 30, that's 150, take away 8 would be 142. 142 and 30, they do sum to 172. So I have the right answer. So now I can write my table. Find the first, oh, it's only asking me, it doesn't say tell me the numbers, or tell me both numbers, or what's the greater number. It says find the first number. So remember, the first number, go back and if you're not sure which one's the first number, go back and look at your left statement. 5x minus 8 equals the first number. So 5x minus 8, the first number is 142. That's the sentence we're going to, from right here. So I'm going to just come here. The, I have to even write smaller. The first number is 142. So I answered the question that was being asked. Find the first number, or I did what it was asking of me. The first number only. Don't write both of them. New York State would mark that wrong if you said the two numbers are 30 and 142 because they're saying that you can't read what the problem is asking you to do. The problem is asking you to find only the first number. So find the first number. First number is 142. I'd like to do um, number 10 on the next page, please. The sum of three numbers is 61. The sum of three numbers is, that's my equal sign, 61. Sum means add. So I'm going to add three things together. The second number is, okay, know something about the second number, 5 times the first, while the third is 2 less than the first. Notice that the first is at the end of this phrase, and it's the end of the sentence. The first is the thing you know the least about. Did they say the first is this? No. They didn't tell you anything about the first. So we're going to call x the first number. So I'm going to start way over here because I know I need a lot of room. Let x equal the first, and I'm going to even abbreviate that, 
first number. The second number is 5 times the first, so that's 5 times x, the first. So let 5x equal the second number, while the third is 2 less than, that means minus 2, the first. 2 less than the first, so that's x minus 2. So let x minus 2 equal the third number. So this first sentence, and you'll see this happens often, one sentence is the equation. The other sentence is, is how to set up the let statements, or your drawing, or your table, or how to set up the variables. So the equation tells you how to put those variables together. The sum of the three numbers is 61. So first number, x, so I go right back to my let statements. Second number, sum it with that, it's 5x. Sum the third number, sum, that's the plus sign, x minus 2 is 61. There's my equation. Again, I have like terms, and you're going to see this keeps happening. x plus 5x is 6x, plus another x is 7x. Oh, minus 2 doesn't have anything to go with that. If it had like another plus 8 or something, you'd have to combine those, but we don't have that. So I had a two-step equation. I'm going to always add or subtract first in this case. I have those two operations left. And I get 7x equals 63. Divide by 7. Divide by 7. Make sure you're canceling. x equals 9. Not done, because we're not just finding one thing anymore, like in our equation solving. We've got to answer what's 5x. So I might come over here. 5 times 9, that's 45. And x minus 2, 9 minus 2, that's equal to 7. So there's my three numbers, 7, 9, and 45. 7, 9, and 45. I'm just going to quickly add those, 7, 9, and 45, to make sure I have the right answer before I write my table with my mini check. 7 and 9 is 16, and 5 is 21. Carry the 2, you get 61. So um, find the numbers. Find the numbers. So I need to state all three of them in my sample. The numbers, okay, this isn't going to get cut off. The numbers are 7, 9, 45. capital letter at the beginning and a period at the end because we're using the Fairport must-haves. we got a subject. So we're using all of our good writing skills in mathematics. Um, I'd like to do number 12. Together, a chair, a table, and a lamp cost $562. Oh, this could have been the sum of three things or the sum of three numbers is 562. Now we're just making it into objects. So maybe we're shopping at Raymore and Flanagan. But together, a chair, a table, and a lamp cost. So I'm going to add these up. The chair plus the table plus the lamp cost, that's my equal sign, is equal to a total of 562. The chair costs four times as much as the lamp, and the table costs 23 less than the chair. Find the cost of the table. Hmm. Now this time, they didn't say the chair cost four times as much as the lamp, and then the table cost 23 less than the lamp. It wasn't the lamp both times at the end of the sentence. So I've got to figure out, reading this a couple times, which one do I know the least about? The chair, da 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 The table, 23 less than the chair. So we know something about the table. The table, da 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 The chair, da 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 what, did it ever start the sentence with the lamp, da, 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 da? No, the lamp is my X. It's kind of a little reading trick that I've learned through the years of how to find which one of these is the one you know the least about. That's going to be the unknown, the X, the variable. That's what the variable is, the unknown. The chair costs four times as much as the lamp. So. 4 times lamp, 4 times x. So let 4x equal the chair. I know that. And the table costs 23 
less than minus 23, the chair. Well, the chair, I just called it 4x. So 23 less than 4x. That means 4x minus 23. That's the table. I'm trying to write table and lamp at the same time. That doesn't work. That's the table. So let x equal the lamp. I'm trying to save room here. So I'm coming way over to the side here. So we've got a lamp plus a chair plus a table, and they cost $562. So I'm going to go right back to the English. The chair, okay, that's 4x. And the table, that was 4x minus 23. And the lamp, well, that was my x, cost $562. So again, I have like terms here. I've got 9x's, 4x plus 4x plus one more x. Add my like terms together. This is combining like terms. There's lots of x's on that one side. Minus 23 equals 562. Two operations. I'm going to add 23. I'm going to add 23. 9x equals 585. Divide by 9. Yes, you may have to take out a calculator to help you do this. 9 goes in there, 6 would be 48, 65 times, 65 times, yep, x equals 65, 9 times 6 is 54, so 48, 9 times 6 is 54, and 45 last 6, yeah, okay, so, x equals 65, um, 4, X is take away 23. I've got to figure out, okay, that X, that's the lamp. I've got to figure out the cost of the table. The table, 4 times 65 minus 23. So that's 4 times 65 is 260 minus 23. That's 237. And then um, 4 times uh, the X, which I just said there, that was 260. So we did the table, the lamp, and the chairs. All together they cost $562, so I better make sure 237 and 260 and 65. We get 12, carry the 1, 4 times 16, carry the 1, 562. Woo! Yippee, we got the right answer. So find the cost of the table. It only asks me the table. So i we'll come over here. Oh, not enough space. The table cost is the table cost is table, table, table is the 4x minus 23, which is $237. I have to go sometimes back and look at the let statements to see which one is it that we said was the table. The table was 4x minus 23. We represented it in an algebraic expression, but now we're using English to say what the cost is. The table cost is $237. So um, that's it for today. If you want, you can try another one of these on these couple pages on your own. See if you can do some of those um, and uh, surprise me in class on Monday.